Hello, and welcome back to Tommy's Top Shelf Comics. I'm Tommy, joined by Murphy. Hello. We're back with this week's Top 5 Comics for the week of January 24th, 2024. 24-24. They were last week's next week's comics, but now it's this week. So they're this week's comics, because we got to talk about them. Because next week, they'll be last week's comics, and we won't need to talk about them anymore. <laughs> So, we're going to start off with our number five, Holy Roller. The Holy Roller say, number three. I'm just going to say, <laughs> your intros are getting to be very Hickman-like. It's like, draw me a map to which week's comics we're on. <laughs> just got to make sure people know that we're talking about this week's top five comics. These these top five. These top five. Uh, but no, number five is the Holy Roller number three. Levi Cohen's return home is short-lived as he retreats to the rock he climbed from underneath, but sometimes the rock has different ideas, and I'm not talking about the movie star. What am I talking about? You'll have to buy this comic to find out. I like this series a lot. Yeah, like, It's only three, three issues in, um, but I'm a big fan. I think Rick Remender, I mean, he's obviously leading these sure. these funny people through but he's been um, making a lot of goofy funny comics for a while now yeah and i mean this one's this one's great i mean it's just beating up anti-semites in a small town in ohio like where do you yeah. how, how can you go wrong you know yeah. like yeah. <laughs> and every week it does have some cool covers yeah this week it it's does. only got one other cover but I, I i like that the suit a lot oh absolutely one there's one i was thinking of a rick remender comic oh, what was it was it no he didn't do hey, rick remender is... it was like a goofy no. one i, might be thinking I of mean else. he's got goofy ones but he's I mean, it's also dark yeah uh, i mean he also has like black science sacrificers yeah. right yeah. now yeah um the sacrificers right now is also very good yeah I think he's got, I mean, he's going to have a lot of stuff coming out now that uh, his imprint is at Image. It's true. Now uh, the giant generators there, it's going to be, and I think they're, they'll be throwing out Rick Remender books all the time. Oh, I'd assume so. Maybe more uh, collabs. It's kind of cool to see yeah. non comic book people write comics. Or and I'm always a little it. hesitant. Yeah. I'm always a little hesitant. Yeah, but this one, this one's really good. Nice. I do like that the the comic book medium is like blowing up in that way. Sure, you know, you sure. Wanna, like, like, like next week we got Kid Cudi. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that's oh, gonna be big. Like, that's gonna be big. Why? But okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't ask for this, but I'm down for it. Like, Moving on to our number four. Star Wars Thrawn Alliances, number one. This book, the book that this is based off is on my nightstand, and I need to read it. But there's <laughs> one or two books in front of it. But, so this comic is the return to the saga of Thrawn with the comic book adaptation of Thrawn Alliances. Timothy Zahn teams with Star Wars veteran Jody House to bring Thrawn Alliances to the pages of comic books. Watch as Andrea Di DeVito and Pat... Olafe bring the action to life, showcasing the tactical prowess of the galaxy's most dangerous mind. So super cool, super exciting. I'm probably going to read the book first. So, yeah, I was, I was going to ask, how do you choose? Do you read the book or the comic first? I bought the book with the intention to read it over the summer <laughs> and haven't gotten <laughs> to it go, yet. Then. So I'm not going to buy then the comic book of the book that I <laughs> is sitting right there. <laughs> Well, we'll um, see. We'll see if I finish the book or this finishes, whatever this series is, finishes on whichever Marvel Unlimited. Comes first. Whichever comes first. If it finishes yeah, on Marvel it, Unlimited, I mean, then I will read it then. The only thing with like the adaptations is it doesn't do it do like the source material. No, and I think it would be time. I think it would be super fun to read this comic after I read the book as well. Yeah, to kind of get the condensed version yeah but hey man thrawn is thrawn's huge thrawn's huge right now yeah and going into that that mandoverse movie that they announced 
and I'm he's gonna be he's gonna be a big dog on the screen, you know. Like it's it's time for them to start giving us Thrawn stuff. He's a big thing in Star I mean, Wars I, Unlimited too, the card game. Yeah. Oh, is he? He's a hero. I think yeah. We have to play more. Yeah, <laughs> we, do. we do. We do. We do. You guys haven't tried Star Wars Unlimited. It's the. It's pretty fun. Uh, I'm considering a new hobby, and that's bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, telling Courtney, I was like, I was like, I can't just pick up a card game. Like, <laughs> I've got so many things. <laughs> you can play it completely for free, just with me on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, no, it's gonna that's gonna be the move. <laughs> but. The moving on to number three is Crashdown, number one. So, covered by series artist Ben Temple Smith, known for his work with IDW, Image, Oni Press, Dark Horse, and more, Tom Garcia and Ryan Sargent, the hosts of the Comic Tom 101 YouTube channel with over 12 million views, team up with legendary horror artist Ben Temple Smith for this three issue story of suspense and survival equal parts lost and alien with a lovecraftian twist crashdown delivers a dark vision of our world's final days the earth is dead humanity's last hope is the distant planet empyrean and the ship full of colonists ready to repopulate our civilization but what happens when their new home doesn't want them there and it fights back Dude, maybe if we just could get like a couple million more views, maybe someone would let us. <laughs> just a couple books. million. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am, I read I a am comic pretty book. excited about this. Never I've, published, I've but... tried. I've, I've tried. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's short, but mm-hmm. I did like, I picked up uh, listening to their podcast a lot during COVID and uh, I was even part of the mail call where they would like send out the mystery comics yeah, every yeah. Uh, month. And then Ben Temple Smith did a lot of covers for them too. So I really got into his art. Uh, so this is exciting. It's just, you know, more creative creator owned horror, you know, I don't see where you can really go wrong. I'm definitely right. interested to see. I mean, these dudes know a whole lot about comics. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, see if they see if they know, how to write one. Absolutely. Very cool stuff. But not quite as cool as our number two. Resurrection of Magneto. Life death on Krakoa. Resurrection from the dead was as easy as completing a circuit. But Krakoa fell. The time of easy miracles is over and only the hard roads left. Hard roads are left. Now it falls to storm as the epic conclusion to the Krakoan Age looms to bring their oldest enemy home to fight against the fall of the House of X. But after all he did, and all that was done to him, can Magneto bear to return? Dude, Magneto. Always a monster. Always a monster. Always a threat. Hey, love Magneto. But yeah, being, like, the way he went out was pretty badass. He was like, ah, you guys are all just getting resurrected. I'm done with it. He's like, don't don't back me up. Don't resurrect me. I'm yeah. done. If I yeah. die, I die. Um, but now, obviously, if they're getting back to, you know, a more simplified X-Men, which we don't know. It might be might be simplified. Heaven forbid. Kind of hoping. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you got to bring Magneto back. Yeah. Like, and then seemingly he's probably gonna they don't have his like Krakoan memories to put back in his head. So right. he's probably gonna go back to like you know, being a little bit of a bad guy. Being a little bit of a bad guy. They I, I love how they they worked him with the last five years, like you know, all the character development, but you know, sometimes getting back to basics uh is pretty cool. Absolutely. I'm about it. I'm I as much as you know, we complain about how many X-Men comics there are to keep up with. I do enjoy like I'm I'm enjoying the end here, yeah. the fall yeah. of the House of X and Rise of uh X. Um it's it's good writing. It, like and even though it's gone far from where Hickman started, like you can tell where Hickman's influences are. Uh so 
They've also made Storm even cooler than like ever. Which is a challenge. That's not easy. <laughs> How'd That's they not do easy. It, right? But also, this uh, new number one brings a new negative space fair. Okay. Of, course it, does. of <laughs> course it does. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have a long box of negative space variants alone. <laughs> Hasn't there already been a Magneto one? Mm, no. No? For the X-Men, or and for mutants in general, and I'm and sure... I'm Wolverine, some, Rogue. There's Wolverine, Rogue. Um, there were like three Jean Greys. I believe that. There's a... Like a... Phoenix... Marvel girl ish and uh, like a white phoenix, which okay. is pretty cool. And then they did three Scarlet Witches, uh, but the difference between the three Scarlet Witches was just how how much clothing she had on. Yeah, <laughs> like Fair down enough. to like the last one looking like a belly dancer. I was like, I'm just going for the one that's like normal. Fair. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of John Tyler Christopher, though, I just got the notification. While we were talking about it, that my Darth Vault and Maul negative space shift. So hey, hey. very excited, it, very excited. It's raining negative space comics. <laughs> Do you know what else? It's raining. Image number ones launching new universe. Image number one. Ghost right, machine really is number it. one. So groundbreaking new era for comics characters and creators launches now. An all-new powerhouse creative collective collides into comics with Ghost Machine's 64-page special, introducing its all-new shared universe of strange, fun, exciting, and action-packed characters. Geiger, Redcoat, Rook, the Rocketfellers, and many, many more. What ties Geiger, Redcoat, Widow X, and the other mysterious historical heroes of the unnamed together? Why is Rook the key to saving the war-torn world of exodus how will everyone's soon to be favorite family of the future adapt to a new life in the present the stories all start now creators you know characters you'll love welcome to ghost machine another image universe man they really are they're pumping them out like we've got now the energon universe Mm -hmm. we've got we'll have this Mm -hmm. and we got the Massive verse mm-hmm. with all of Kyle the Hayden stuff. stuff. Uh, they did, yeah, they did the Miller Miller verse. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, Miller World. Miller World. Yeah, um, and that's all in the last like Miller World's older though, and a half. Miller World's more. well, yeah, but then they did like the the big the big game crossover, yeah, um, event, yeah, to. When they brought, like, right after they brought back Nemesis. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of big names on this, though. A lot of DC names. Like Jeff Johns, Peter J. Tomasi, Ivan Riaz, Francis Manipul, Brian Hitch, Gary Frank, Jason Favok, Lamont McGee. Brad Anderson, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. I Look, they're... Image is doing it right, you know. These dudes are all still working for big companies mm-hmm. and then able to do whatever they want with Image. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you? you yeah, know? absolutely. Um, absolutely. I don't I admittedly don't know much about these characters. Like, I, I don't either. I, I, I really tried reading Geiger. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried Geiger a couple times. But with this kind of a restart, it's kind of a reintroduction to these characters. Yeah, yeah, and there's going to be the new shot. stories and things yeah. like that. So I'm definitely interested to check it out. Absolutely. Let's see. Are there any cool variants? Actually, the Jason Fay book. Um, yeah. One in 100 is real cool. I don't know. These characters look pretty crazy. Black and yellow. Might have to, might, yep. Might have to might have to read some of it. Jeff Johns, though. Yeah. 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 How can you, you know, like, yeah. gotta, gotta give it a little bit of a shot. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Cool. Well, anything no. else? What? 
No, I think that's it. I was going to say anything else before this week's top five comics or last week's top five comics and next mm-hmm. week's top five comics or this week's top five comics? No, I think we're good. Cool. Well, until this week's top five comics or next week's top five comics, <laughs> and we'll catch you guys later. <laughs> Have a good one.